All right, good morning. Well, anybody know what Pepsi is? First of all, I want to ask, do we, how many people in here are from operations, work in operations? Okay, anybody from sales? Let's see, one hand, anybody else from sales? Okay, what I want to try to cover today is how in today's lifestyle of product manufacturing and sales and so forth, it's no longer I work in operations and you work in sales. It's finding out in the success of our company that operations become sales, basically, in order to be successful. So I hope from the end of this, you'll understand more of what I'm talking about. Because what I want to try to accomplish today is I'm going to tell you who we are. I'm going to show you what is inside of our supply chain at Pepsi Bottling Ventures and uh, how I redefine my role as demand planning manager to improve the forecast. I'm going to touch on our KPIs and metrics, show our results, and then we'll as I'll answer any questions at the end of the presentation. My name is Wallace DeMint. I am the demand planning manager for Pepsi Bottling Ventures, and we are, of course, manufacturing of soda pop. And I have been with the company going on almost 20 years now, well, 17 years. I've been with them since 1999. So I've seen a lot, done a lot, and been privileged enough to be within the company through our growth in the SNOP process. So, a little bit of us as a company. From a corporate history, we started out as a family-owned bottler in the 40s up in Long Island, New York. And over the years, we became a bottler that went out and purchased other bottlers. Because if you know the history of soft drinks uh, with Pepsi and uh, <coughs> the competition, which I'm allowed, not allowed to say, and of course, our company does drug testing, and if they find Coke in my system, well, then I'm fired. So. <laughs> Can't talk about that either. So, but over the years, we acquired other family bottlers because back in the 1800s when Caleb Branham discovered Pepsi or created Pepsi in New Bern, he wanted to distribute it. And of course, with the logistics and so forth of that day and time when we had no SNOP process, in order to get his product out to more and more people, he had to sort of sell his secrets, sell his soft drinks to other families, to other people, they would in turn make the product distributed in their area and so forth and so forth. So over the years, through the history of soft drinks, family-owned operations became bigger and bigger and bigger across the country in order to get Pepsi Cola nationwide and so forth. So as the years went by, we started buying up all of the smaller family-run operations and so forth and moving in through um, different acquisitions. And then in 1999, um, Suntory, which is a Japanese firm, and PepsiCo struck up a, pop, a partnership and made Pepsi Bottling Ventures because the company I work for, Pepsi Bottling Ventures, is actually majority owned by Suntory Limited, which is one of the largest beverage manufacturers in Japan, and they're our primary owner. But around 2000, when I started with Pepsi, we implemented SNOP processes and started building on our infrastructure, of course, going with SAP, and building a demand planning platform. Um, we do not use SAP for demand planning and logistics, but we do use SAP as our business foundation block for all of our financial stuff and uh, for all of our other aspects of the company. But continuing over the years, we continue to buy up properties and so forth across the country. Then in 2013, some of you might remember from the news when overnight, PepsiCo, which is the parent company of Pepsi, decided to go out and purchase the two largest bottlers of Pepsi Cola in the country, and that was Pepsi Americas and Pepsi Bottling Group, thus buying back their right to make soft drinks, because in the past, PepsiCo was just PepsiCo. They told bottlers what to make. They didn't actually have say-so in the actual production of their product. Well, they felt over the years that they were losing more and more control in how they go to market, how different parts of the country promoted their product and so forth, and they wanted it back. So, of course, they go out and buy the two largest bottlers. Well, Pepsi Bottling Ventures was number three, and we didn't become part of the acquisition of PepsiCo, so that moved us into the number one spot of being the largest franchise bottler in the country. Well, during that process, we got to thinking about it and said, okay, how can we better our base, our customer base for our customers and become a better uh, bottler in the Pepsi family? So we sold 
our New York territory, and we also um, traded our Idaho and Vermont territories for Charlotte, North Carolina, giving us one of the larger, more concise footprints in North Carolina where we're based out of. And because of that, we made numerous route changes within our North Carolina territory and reintroduced ourselves in the area for Pepsi bottling ventures. So because of all of this stuff that's of today, we're now the largest privately held bottler in North America. Our ownership, of course, is about 65 cents Suntory Limited out of Japan, and about 35% is PepsiCo. We're headquartered in Raleigh, North Carolina. We have 21 manufacturing and distribution facilities uh, that cover North Carolina, Maryland, Delaware, Virginia, and South Carolina. We employ about 2,500 people and serving over 9 million consumers within the area. And out of all of this and the size of our company and so forth, the number of supply chain forecasters, one, and you're looking at them. Yes, I am the demand planning manager for Pepsi Bottling Ventures. I'm responsible for making sure the consumers have product on the shelf. And it's the time we finish this, I hope you understand more about how I survive it and how I don't end up in an insane asylum and so forth. And that's where we get to the point of what my presentation is today. I call it the SNOP, Building a Better Bridge. Reason I ask how many people are in operations and how many people are in sales is because over the years, and especially coming up in this industry and stuff since 1999, it was always operations did their thing, sales did their thing. Sales told us what to make and we just made it, no questions asked, no pushback, no anything like that. And that's where all the trouble started. So when I took the position of demand planning manager in 2008, our SNOP, SNOP, SNOP process had been implemented for about two and a half years. And first thing the executive team sat me down and said was make it better. Design it, make it better. We want to see something quickly. So I'm sitting here going, okay, I'm in operations. I've always been in operations. I do what sales tells me to do. I produce the product to make sure they don't run out. Well, how can I make that better? Well, what do sales actually do? How do they do it? so forth like that, I started asking the questions. And that's where I implemented what I'm gonna be speaking on today. And so hopefully, hopefully by the end of this presentation, we will learn how to break down the silos, establish and keep effective communication within your organization, uh, establishing KPIs and metrics and the importance behind them. I'm, I'm sorry, I mean, a lot of people are like, oh my God, having to track something or keep metrics and so forth. I live by them. I mean, this is my drug of choice is KPIs and metrics because to me, it is the only way to produce results. And then using the results to better your forecast accuracy because we're doing the simple math, better forecast accuracy, of course, makes everything else better and it makes it so I can sleep at night. So within our supply chain, we have a nine member team centrally located at the corporate office. Our responsibilities include, of course, production planning, full good and raw material forecasting, deployment of product, raw materials, uh, procurement and ordering, uh, non-produced product ordering, uh, contract sales, capacity planning, and so forth. We cover the whole gamut of the supply chain part of the operation. We handle about 600 plus SKUs in multiple size and package configurations. And around 65% of those items are produced with 35% ordered from outside the uh, company. And accurate forecasts are critical in making sure all of these jobs are successful. So how do I redefine the shine? When they came and told me that I needed to better improve our forecast accuracy and prevent out of stocks, keep the inventories level low and keep everybody happy. So, what I decided to sit down and figure out was try to determine on how supply chain could better input into the sales side and make better business decisions. Because I know with the SNOP process, you hear at times people say that it should be a one world forecast. Uh, you should bring in finance, you should bring in operations, you should bring in uh, executive, everybody roll it into one, sales, everything. And to an extent, that is a good thing to do, but I've learned over the years that that might not be the best thing to do with certain businesses and so forth. It's sort of, okay, you make your forecast, I make my forecast, and we sit down and we discuss it and we come to an agreement. It's not, I'm gonna go buy finance because they're out there for one thing and that's to make money. 
I'm from a supply chain side is to save money by keeping inventories low, prevent out of stocks, and have the product available to sell. So how do I do that? Okay, let's break it down simply. Everybody knows what knowledge is, and everybody knows what wisdom is. Of course, you get knowledge, uh, if you bring knowledge into your base, then of course from that knowledge you develop wisdom. So everybody knows if you have knowledge, you know that tomato is a fruit. But if you have wisdom, you know tomatoes will not taste good in a fruit salad, right? So how do you get to these two points? How do you take the knowledge that you have acquired? And luckily with Pepsi Bottling Ventures, we invested into it early. We bought the software, we bought the infrastructure, we bought everything. We went out and found the best teams, we went out and found the best people. We hired them, and just to say that we consider that our people are very special, most of the people within Pepsi Bottling Ventures are pushing 35, 40 years with the company. I mean, like I said, I still feel like a rookie because I've been with the company only 17 years. But we bring in the people, we keep them. So, we have the knowledge. So with that, we think, okay, we've got wisdom now. We can make everything perfect. Nobody will ever be out of stock. Everybody will have the Pepsi in their hand. Nobody will have out-of-date products. That's where the breakdown and everything started. You can have the best of the best and have the best intentions, but they not always be what's best for your company. And that's what I want to talk about today, where we got successful was understanding the understanding part, the critical part of how do you take the knowledge you have, turn out the wisdom you need to be successful. This is the part I want to talk to you about today, getting between those two points. You've got the talent, you've got the software, you know what you want to do, how do you get there? And so. Everybody's seen this on about every presentation about SNOP. It's the dreaded silo effect. You have purchasing, you have marketing, you have sales, and you have operations. Everybody is in their own world. They are, we are, are, are a streamlined company. We're all doing multiple jobs. We go in, we put in long hours, and it's our job to make sure that our job is done the best of the best. So you sort of forget about the other departments a lot of times, or you have a very limited communication avenue going between them. So a lot of times it's a lot of roadblocks, a lot of times it's a lot of repeat, unnecessary work. So can anybody relate to this? Anybody in this room go through this on a daily basis, not knowing what marketing's doing, not knowing what operations doing, not knowing what sales, or is everybody sitting in here working for the perfect company and you don't have any issues? Wow, there's a lot of hands up. So, how did I redo it? Okay. I built a bigger pipeline. I said, I went to, and I went to the executive team, sat down with the CEO of the company, director of finance and stuff, and said, I'm the demand planning manager for operations, but I need to be in purchasing. I need to be in marketing. I need to be in sales. I need to be everywhere. I need to be the liaison between all of these departments. I need to be involved with them. I need to work with them. I need to be a part of them. I don't need to be sitting in my office looking at data every day just on the operations side.